Hi everybody, welcome to Stoichiometry. This will be an introductory video where I take you through some of the basics of stoichiometry before we get into limiting reactants and other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn, take what we know about, sorry, take what we know about writing chemical formulas, balancing equations, and working with moles, and roll it all into one giant uh, problem. So it's going to be lots of little steps that you have to piece together. You'll be fine, just take it easy. So let's start with something familiar. Let's say you're a cook, a cook and you need to make breakfast specials and each breakfast special has to have two eggs and three pieces of bacon. Okay, that's what your boss wants. Now your boss hands you three dozen eggs, so here's what we got, three dozen eggs and you have a ton of bacon. And they want to know how many breakfast specials can you make? So let's write this as a chemical equation, right? So we're going to say that we need um, eggs and we need bacon and we're going to use that eggs and bacon to produce specials but we first need to balance that equation so it tells us that we need two eggs and we need three bacon to make one breakfast special so two eggs three bacon strips makes one breakfast special now what I'm going to give you is called a, um, a BCA table Okay, and it's going to be a technique for helping you solve these. So, a before, a change, and an after. Okay, so before we begin making any breakfast specials, we know that we have three dozen or 36 eggs. Okay, we also know that we have a ton of bacon. So somewhere in the back room there's boxes and boxes. We're going to abbreviate that XS for excess. We have too much bacon. We're never going to use all the bacon. And before we start working, we actually have zero specials. There are no breakfast specials. And when during this process, what we want to do is we want to use up all 36 of our eggs and be left with zero eggs. Okay, so the change I want to see is all 36 eggs used and left with zero eggs. So how many breakfast specials am I going to make? Well, if I start out with zero breakfast specials and I need two eggs for each one, some of you can do this in your head and figure out that you're going to make 18 breakfast specials. So you're going to add 18 breakfast specials. So you had a negative sign here with a 36 that says you're going to use up your 36 eggs. And the positive sign here says you're going to create 18 breakfast specials. Now, you could do that in your head, I'm sure, but I'm going to give you a mathematical technique to show you how to do that so that when we get into the chemicals, we'll have a better idea how to solve them. So let's change colors just so we stay... Um, fresh here and I'm gonna say that for every two eggs I can make one breakfast special so a ratio two eggs to one special and I actually have 36 eggs and I want to figure out how many breakfast specials I can make okay so we're gonna do ratios two eggs is to one special as 36 eggs is to X specials so we'll cross multiply and we'll get cross multiply we're gonna get 2x equals 36 so x equals 18 specials okay which we already did in our head but I want to show you to use this technique we're going to use our coefficients here our 2 and our 1 as ratios that for every two eggs I need one I'm gonna make one special now it didn't ask us about this but let's try and figure out how much bacon we actually used in the process too so change colors again, let's go blue this time again. Uh, actually we'll go red. Um, and this time we're gonna say for every two eggs, I'm gonna need three pieces of bacon. Okay, so for every two eggs I need three pieces of bacon and I have 36 eggs. So how many pieces of bacon is that gonna be? Well, if we cross multiply, we'll get 2x equals 108 and that's going to mean that I will need 54 pieces of bacon because 108 divided by 2 is going to give you 54. Now I'm going to be using that bacon up so I need a minus sign there um, and if I had a ton of bacon and I subtracted 54 pieces what do I have left? I got a ton. 
okay, you go back there, your boss is never going to miss 54 pieces of bacon out of boxes and boxes. So essentially, what we have in the end is, I need 54 pieces of bacon, 36 eggs, and I'm going to create 18 breakfast specials out of that. Okay, let's try one of these with real chemicals this time. So process-wise, we're going to need to write and balance an equation. So it says, let's switch back to blue here, um, lead's going to react with hydrochloric acid. So I've got lead reacting with hydrochloric acid, and it's going to produce lead chloride, lead 2 chloride, okay, and hydrogen gas. Now, make sure you actually wrote real chemicals. I know that my lead has a plus 2 charge because it's lead 2, and I know that chlorine is a minus 1 charge, so I'm going to need 2 chlorines for each lead, so I know my lead 2 chloride's right. Uh, hydrochloric acid formula is good too. It, now we need to balance it. I have two chlorines on the right, and I have one chlorine on the left, so I need a coefficient of two in front of that. And now my equation is actually balanced. Okay, now read back through the problem, and it tells you that you want to find how many moles of hydrochloric acid are needed. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out what will my change be in hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to essentially be looking for this amount right here. How much hydrochloric acid will I need in order to react with four moles of lead? So I know from the problem that I actually have four moles of lead, um, but it doesn't tell me how much hydrochloric acid I started out with. So if it doesn't tell you, I want you to assume you have a ton of it, that you have gallons and gallons of hydrochloric acid. Now before you begin this reaction, you have no lead to chloride, zero. And you haven't created any hydrogen gas either. So before, we have four moles of lead, a ton of hydrochloric acid, no lead chloride, no hydrogen gas. I want to use up all of my lead. So I want to be left with zero moles of lead when I'm done. I want to totally com and completely react it. So how many moles of hydrochloric acid out of these gallons and gallons will I need to use? So let's do some ratios. Okay, I've got a ratio that says for every one lead, I need two hydrochloric acid. So down here, one PB mole, or one PB, sorry, um, is, this, is gonna be in relation to two hydrochloric acids. Now where did I get that? Here's my one, one lead requires two hydrochloric acids. Now, how much do I actually have? Well, I actually have four moles of lead, four moles of PB, and I wanna try and figure out how many moles of hydrochloric acid I'm gonna need. Okay, if you cross multiply here, you will quickly figure out that you need eight moles of um, hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to put a negative sign there that tells me that I'm going to use that up during the process. So in the end, how much hydrochloric acid will I be left with? Well, I'll be left with a ton of it. I had a whole bunch. I'm going to use eight moles and be left with a ton of leftovers. So the question asked, how much am I going to use? Well, I'm going to use eight moles. Now, just for learning processes, I want to go a little bit further and try one or two other things here just so that you know how these work. The question didn't ask how much lead chloride you produce, but let's go ahead and look at that. So let's change colors. Let's say I want to find out how much lead chloride I'm going to make. Okay. So I need to know how much change in lead chloride there's going to be and how much they'll be left with after. So again, I need to know the coefficient on the lead chloride, and it's one. So my ratio is gonna be one lead is to one lead chloride. Now make sense of that for a second in your head. If I have one lead atom, how many lead chloride um, molecules or formula units can I put together? I can only put one. Because as soon as I use that one lead atom, I'm done. I need two chlorine atoms that I'm going to get from my acid, but I can't make two lead chlorides because I only have one lead atom. Okay, So the ratio is one lead is to one lead chloride, 
And I know that I have four moles of lead. So how many moles of lead chloride, lead two chloride, can I make? If you cross multiply, you're gonna quickly realize that you can make 4.0 moles. Now, I'm gonna make this a positive, and it's positive because I'm making the lead chloride. It's a product. So if I started out with zero, I make four, I'm gonna be left with four moles of lead chloride. So a quick hint here, any things that have the same um, coefficient, like the lead and the lead chloride, they will have exactly the same number of moles. Four moles used up, four moles created. Okay, so given that, and the fact that hydrogen gas here has a coefficient of one, how many moles of hydrogen gas will I create? Four, because everything that has a, a one as its coefficient will now either use up or create four moles in this problem.